Hello and welcome to Yesterday's Airlines for another exclusive model sample review video. And in this video, I'm following up the previous video, which featured the new NG Models Boeing 777-200 series samples with, of course, the Boeing 777-300 series samples. Now, before I get into too much detail of the video, um, there's been a lot of feedback on the first set of molds and also some feedback on the written review that I did related to these ones. Yeah, and a lot of that feedback's been really valid and genuine. Um, however, it is worth pointing out that these are just samples. Um, they're not expected to be perfect first time around. And one of the things that's been pointed out in relation to these Series 300s is that both of these samples as you can see from the picture here, have got the 300 ER wingtips with the, the raked wingtips. Um, and yet, one of them is fitted with Rolls-Royce Trent engines. It really doesn't matter. You know, the fact that the 300 ER never wore Trents, you know, it doesn't matter. These are just samples. The key thing that I'm trying to get across with these review videos is that NG sent the samples and they have all the components to make the right 777. So of course they have got a wing that will work for a Series 300 because it's the same wing which was fitted to the Series 200 samples. And similarly, um, in terms of the engines, obviously it doesn't really matter if they're hanging off a 300 sample. Uh, the key thing is that the pylon and the engines themselves look okay. So that is what I've been reviewing. You know, I'm reviewing the details. I'm not sitting there going, oh, look, they've sent me a Series 300 model, but oh, it's got ER wings on it, because it doesn't really matter. They're obviously not going to make that mistake when they release the actual models um, in actual liveries. So really what I'm looking at here are the components of the samples and trying to work out you know, whether those are fit for purpose or not. I'm not going to be worrying too much about the fact on these 777s that, you know, in this case here, that one of these has got Trent engines when it's got the ER wings. Okay, so now that's over with. Anyway, um, if you're enjoying these videos and you like the last video and all the videos I've produced, then please do subscribe to my channel here um, and like the video, obviously. And check me out on at Yester Airlines on Instagram. And I'm obviously also on Facebook. And check out most of the bigger Facebook groups for 400 scale, like 400 scale in detail, and the Way Better group, and 400 scale model group. Um, because I'm active on those groups as well. And they're all good groups. Obviously, also check out yesterdaysairlines.com, which is the hub of all the work I do. And, um, you know, let's take a look at these and see how they differ from the Series 200s and you know whether there are things that need to be improved over and above um, that which I talked about in the previous video. Okay, so obviously these 300 series molds share the vast majority of their details with the Series 200 molds which I've already looked at. So I'm not gonna go over in detail elements um, like the shape around the roof line here, which as we saw in the previous video is perhaps not 100% correct. Um, I'm gonna focus more on the things which I haven't looked at already, which are specific to this series of 777. So yeah, this, this will share the same issues around here. It's got the same, um, the nose gear door is a little small. It's got same issues with the flap track fairings. It's got um, the same issues in this rudder region and the curve at the top of the tail. And just, although on these 300 samples, I think the window line is slightly better placed and in a slightly better position um, relative to the horizontal stabilizers here, it still is also probably a little bit high as well. So yeah, those are things which um, we've talked about in the Series 200 reviews. I'm not gonna cover them in a lot of detail here. It also has all the beneficial points, um, especially in relation to this really nice um, wing joint area here and a great fairing setup and excellent um, main gear doors um, and a really nice look and feel in general. I know some people have talked about, they think, oh, it looks too narrow, the fuse large. I, I don't agree. I think it's looking, looking fine. Um, and as generally as a 777, this is nice, but 
As we said before, there are areas for improvement like the vertical stabilizer especially. I'd like to see a bit more detailing on the, the, uh, the tail cone too and the points that I've already just talked about. So I'm not gonna cover those in a huge amount of detail. What I am gonna do, however, as I said, is look at some of the other elements. Now, one of the things that I, I also mentioned in the previous video is that one of these 300 samples has the kind of 200 and 300 landing gear, and this is the one that does the one here with the Trents, which is probably supposed to be a standard 300, but as I said, has got the ER wings, not a big issue. Um, and you can see here that this does not have the extra hydraulic actuator, which is present on those 200s molds erroneously and is present as you can see here on the other sample. So they do have the right landing gear for the 777-300 and the 200 and 200 ER as well. It's just they hadn't fitted it previously to the, um, the 200 molds. So it's a little annoying, but as I said, these are samples, it's, it's not the end of the universe. I'm sure they'll get it right um, when they release the models. And if they don't, then that is the time to criticize. So I think that you know this is a proper gear, and I don't think it's just broken. It's hard to tell, but um, it certainly looks okay, and you know makes the gear okay. Now I've seen some people also complaining about the actual tires themselves. Um, not sure where I stand on that, to be honest. I haven't done a huge amount of work to look at the tire thickness. It's not something that stood out to me dramatically as an issue in terms of the thickness of these tires. Let's see if I can get this focus a bit better close up. There we go. Is there an issue? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm not sure if there is or not. Um, but if there is, it's it's a pretty minor point. That's not something that's going to stop me from buying a triple seven. The thing is, the tires, they still look pretty good. Um, and not a major issue there. Moving to the wings, uh, obviously, as I've already mentioned, um, and I'm sure you all know, the 300ER has raked wingtips, this extended wingtip, giving better aerodynamic performance. Um, it's also present, I believe, on the Series 200 LR and the LRF, the freighter version of the 200. Um, so let's take a closer look at the wingtips, um, see what we think of those, and if I can get them to focus a bit, it's a bit interesting. Here we go. You can see in quite close-up detail here, that they've got quite a well-defined wingtip here. When you look in some pictures, it looks very much like this just goes to a point, um, but that isn't the case. And in fact, on the wingtip of the 300ER here, then it comes up and then it pushes back. And you can see here that they've got that change in angle quite nicely and a little spike at the back. So I'm quite liking the shape of the winglets, no dramatic, issues from my area or from my opinion looking at the right wing tips of these samples um obviously when you look hyper detail it's a little it's a bit weird but um but broadly i think that they look good on the wing they are a decent representation of a triple seven wing um for a 300 er and i think you know those winglets uh, right wing tips are looking looking good so no problem for me in terms of the wings, and it proves obviously that they have the right wing for those versions of the 777-200 and 300 that use this later wing. Um, this sample does seem to have some slightly rougher back edge here, but I'm sure that's just a sample thing. Okay. So um, the other thing um, which was a factor in um, the 777-300ER is, is moving back to the rear of the aircraft. Obviously, 777-300 is a very long aeroplane. It's the new 777-NEO, uh, or whatever it's called. X, isn't it? <laughs> is longer than the 9, but um, the 777-300 at the time was a very long aircraft, as you can clearly see. And one of the things that was fitted to all of these early 777-300s and also to the ER series up until I think around 2015 or so was a tail bumper which should be visible here as a small fairing uh, and that is missing off the mold so that is something that I would like to see added on because it is relevant for probably I would say um, the majority of the production run of the series 300 ER 
and all the production run of the original Series 300. So I think it will be well worth um, NG fitting this fairing on there. Otherwise, the fuselage and tail, aside from obviously the extra length, um, are the same pretty much as on the Series 200 samples. Sorry, keep cat hairs on this. Um, but uh, otherwise, I don't see any extra or, or new problems um, with the mould. It is broadly the same. So let's move on to the engines next and take a look in more detail at the engines for these 777-300s. Okay, so the first engine we'll look at is of course the one which should not be fitted to an ER and that is the Rolls-Royce Trent 800 series and that is um, the model um, and engine selection that we're looking at here. Overall here, I'm liking the shape of the nacelle. The, the Trent has actually got a smaller diameter than um, the General Electric engines and it's got this very tight fit to the nacelle after the engine, um, sorry, fit to the pylon after the engine nacelle there in the, the second stage. I haven't got any major concerns about the shape of the pylon and the way that it curves across to join the nacelle here. And moving to the front, um, I quite like the shape. And indeed, there's some really good detailing on the fan blades, which I hope you can see here. Now, one thing that I did notice though with these fan blades is that they appear to be facing the wrong way. They appear to be curving the wrong way. Um, on this engine here, you can see they, they seem to be curving in a clockwise direction. Whereas um, when I looked at pictures of the real engine, They appear to be curving in a counterclockwise direction. So I do think that NG have probably got this wrong and that these fan blades should be curving in the opposite direction to the way that they are here on this Rolls-Royce engine. So that's something that, again, I'd like to see resolved, but otherwise the shape of the nacelle itself, the shape of the second stage and the exhausts uh, and the pylon don't see any dramatic issues with that. Okay, so that's the Trent engine, which of course will be suitable for 777-200s um, as well as non-ER-300s. Moving to the other sample, um, which in every respect is the same except for the engines and the pylons. And this one is wearing the famous General Electric G90-110B series, I think this is better to be a 115B. And this is a much larger engine in terms of the diameter of the actual engine itself. Um, if I just bring in the, the other engine here, you can see how much taller the engine is. And also that it, the blades inside uh, are much wider. And comparing this to the engine on the Series 200 sample, the GE-1994B, uh, um, it is significantly taller, it is um, significantly longer, the nacelle, and the attachment point here of the pylon to the top of the nacelle is further back. And, and that looks good, and, and I'm quite happy with the way that that looks and feels in comparison to the, the real thing in the images that I have seen. So I don't really have any major concerns with this engine option. And looking at the fan blades, whereas on their G1994B, I think that they had the blades being too curvy and not straight enough. On the 115 here, don't have any issues with the curve here. It's definitely supposed to have curvier blades and they look good. So again, it's a solid core engine, even though the detailing makes it look Kind of like it isn't. Um, it's got some really nice three-dimensional detailing going on there, but behind the the fan blades, the engine is is solid. So I'm thinking that these look, you know, pretty good.
So in summary, I think that NG still, just like with the Series 200, has, has a reasonable amount of work to do here to modify some of the lines around the cockpit um, and to modify the back end of the mold. But, um, but just like the 200, I think there's a, a decent basis here to be worked on and the, the end mold is likely to be pretty good. The Series 300 from a uh, a perspective of available market. It's a very different game to that of the Series 200. There are a lot of Series 300 molds available. There are currently active. You'd say that the best mold is probably the JC Wings mold by a very slight margin over that of Aviation 400, primarily because the AV400 mold has some issues both at the tail cone and in the shape of the main gear um, doors, and they're too high on the, on the other carriage. Um, there's also the Phoenix mold, the perennial Phoenix mold, which has been well liked for many years and has been upgraded, um, but, but personally I don't think Phoenix compete effectively against uh, AV400 or even JC Wings. And then there's probably still, I don't know if they're still using it, they wouldn't surprise me if occasionally it pops one out. Uh, Gem and I have still got their old seamed mold, which is obviously miles and miles behind everyone else's. So there's plenty of Series 300 molds. There's obviously been a lot of models produced and a lot of them have used the good molds, um, especially on the Phoenix. So there's not the same market opportunity in my eyes that there is with the 200. There's probably not that many Series 300 aircraft that have not been produced. And when you look at airlines like Singapore and KLM and Garuda, um, there have been lots of releases um, across many manufacturers from old Dragon Wings models to Gemini to, to AV400, you know. So is there the same area, the same latitude for releases? No, probably not. Is there the same need? Probably not. Um, I doubt that many people are going to be going out and buying these NG777s, 300s to replace A400 or JC Wings editions. Maybe they will be using them to replace the old scene Geminis. And in that area is probably the area um, where there is an, uh, a, an option because JC Wings don't really produce American aircraft because they don't like to compete with their, their production partner Gemini. A400 don't produce that many and they'll produce them late. And Phoenix rarely produce anything that's not Asian either, except for perhaps some KLM. So, there's not been a lot of uh, North American 777s in recent years. Having said that, the Series 300 is hardly a major component of US airline fleets anyway. So yeah, there's some there, but there's not a huge amount. So it'll be interesting to see how many uh, models in this, um, on these molds are produced. Probably quite a few, because there seem to be an endless number of, of collectors in China that want these aircraft. But, um, personally, I can't see myself getting a large number of them, no matter how good the mold is, simply because it's unlikely to be significantly better than that being produced by JC Wings or 400 anyway. But, um, if you're looking to be king of 400 scale, and NG models appear to be looking to do that, then you can't really not have a 777-300 mold. So this mold fits nicely into their growing portfolio of molds, which seems to be ever expanding. Um, and and yeah, um, I can see that they'll probably get some good use out of it and make some decent money off it. Um, but hey, it's, it's not really the mold that sets my um, excitement level particularly high, but uh, I know there are lots of people who are interested in these and especially perhaps some earlier Series 300 non-ER examples, there's possibly a wider option for models that are really needed in 400 scale. Anyway, um, that's kind of my quick roundup of these molds. I hope you've enjoyed the material I've produced over the last week or so. Um, looking at these NG model samples, I'm really looking forward to seeing NG um, tweak the molds to improve the lines and change elements and come up with a better 777. I don't know when they're going to end up releasing these to market, probably a little while away judging by um, the look of the molds at the moment. But I want to thank NG Models for sending me through these samples. I think it's excellent that they give people like myself and collectors like yourselves the option to see these molds early so that they can comment on them and make changes. It's great to have a manufacturer that wants to work with the community to improve what's being released. So bravo to NG Models for that. 
And you know, and also bravo to you for all the comments that people have left. Thank you very much for um, commenting. You've certainly enriched the videos and the content that I've made. So thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the new NG models, Tupolev, TU154, and the 7478 models. Hopefully NG will send me a sample of those too. And I can produce some written content and videos to keep you guys informed. So thanks very much. I'll see you later.